Hey guys, this is Joe from Analog Archive, back with another vinyl video. Today's video is going to be a little bit unique because instead of me just showing finds that I've gotten uh, from Rochester or on like Discogs or eBay, um, a lot of these records that I'm going to be showing are from different uh, destinations that I've taken on kind of these road trips from the last few weeks. Um, I'll start with the records that I found um, from Rochester, uh, which again, if you've watched my channel for a while, that's my go-to uh, kind of place to find records outside of buying online. Um, but then I'm going to get into uh, two different places that I've gone in the last few weeks, as I said, um, and some great not only uh, great advice on record stores to check out in the locations, but also some great records that I found um, as well. So we'll get started. Um, again, a few things I found at the Bob Shop the last time I was there. First one, this is Eric Gale. This is called Ginseng Woman. This is on Columbia from 1977. Um, if you've watched my last few videos, I've been talking about uh, a group that he was a part of called Stuff, uh, this great jazz funk group from the late 70s, um, included him, Cornell Dupree on guitar as well. And then it also had like Steve Gadd on the drums, um, just a great group. But this is one of his solo albums. Uh, my last video I showed one of his records that he had had on the Kudu label, um, but just got this one. I haven't had a chance to spin it yet, but um just a great kind of larger ensemble it's got quite a quite a big group to it um but really love his guitar playing his tone um and excited to check out this one real cheap as well uh next one is called uh it's by instant funk and the name of it is uh, get down with the philly jump um i wasn't familiar with this this group instant funk uh, this was on actually the Bop Shops Discogs page, um, and they have a kind of a, 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 a situation where if you go into the shop and you uh, want to buy something off of their Discogs page, they take 10% off, so that that covers kind of the cost of shipping and, and PayPal and Discogs fees. So um, found this one, uh, promo copy, haven't had a chance to listen to this one either, but just a great, funky, uh, later 70s. Uh, 1976 on CBS. So excited to check that one out as well. Instant Funk. That one sounded really good uh, with kind of just streaming it. Then the other one that I found, uh, this was also another one from Discogs that uh, around the Bob, the Bob Shop Discogs page. This is It's a Funky Thing to Do. Hank Crawford. Now um, going through the Bob Shop kind of main jazz section, they have quite a few albums by Hank Crawford and I've kind of always passed over them um, for whatever reason, just never really uh, paid too much attention to it. But I saw this one um, I was intrigued kind of by the cover, but also the name. Um, so check this one out, jazz, jazz funk type, kind of soul jazz almost. Uh, it's got Cornell Dupree and Eric Gale on guitar. So the one that I showed at the beginning, uh, Richard T is on the piano. Ron Carter's on the bass, um, and Pee Wee Ellis is also on uh, the piano on one of the tracks. So again, this is kind of like a jazz funk type album. Excited to check this one out though as well. So it's a funky thing, Hank Crawford. This one actually just showed up today. This is a Discogs, or not Discogs, this is a uh, eBay find. This is Funkadelic One Nation Under a Groove. Um, this is original on Warner Brothers, also comes with the seven inch. I was watching uh, Sherv, Julius De Jabbar's channel, uh, his the jazz vinyl tag that he had done that Chris Tunes from the Man Cave had started. And the last record, the last question, um, he showed this record as the one where if his house was on fire and he had to, sh to save one record, this would be it. Um, I thought it was kind of just a coincidence that I was waiting for this one to come in the mail. Um, and he actually mentioned the fact that it's definitely worth finding a copy that has the seven inch. Um, so was able to find a copy, pretty good price as well. So I've um, been kind of starting to get into more of the Funkadelic Parliament catalog in the last few weeks and just adding to that one with this. This is a classic one. So excited to check this one out. One Nation Under a Groove. 
Uh, this is the last one from uh, kind of the online slash record or Rochester finds. This one came from a guy that I bought a few records on Instagram. Um, real nice guy lives in New York or lives in New Jersey, right near New York City. Um, and he had told me about a uh, connection that he had with some Strata East titles and he listed the titles. Um, this one stood out to me. I've been always looking for this one, Capper Black, Billy Harper. Uh, this is one of the staples of the Strata East catalog. This is an original from 73. Um, and it's just excellent. Not only the, the, uh, the playing itself, the solos, really great. Uh, like avant-garde post-bop sound by Billy Harper, but great lineup as well. You've got George Cables on piano, Reggie Workman bass, Julian Priester trombone, Dick Griffin on trombone, Billy Cobham on the drums, Warren Smith on the drums, Jimmy Owens on the trumpet, and then uh, the special guest is Elvin Jones on the drums. Um, and just, I had a, I listened to this one last week, absolutely incredible sound to it uh, especially the closing track cry of hunger just it's incredibly great saxophone playing um some vocals on side b on both both of the tracks um not a huge fan of them doesn't i don't know not as not as great but um doesn't take too much away from it but just an excellent album overall really excited to grab that so thank you um to, uh, to the guy I bought it on Instagram. Just excellent. Uh, an excellent friend I've made on Instagram and really another great one um, to find from him. He was also the one that uh, hooked me up with the uh, Charlie Rouse one on Strata East as well um, that I showed a few weeks ago. So um, just a great set of finds as well. Um, now getting into some of the ones that are from the two road trips that I've taken. The first one, um, my wife and I, and then uh, my sister-in-law and a friend went to the Hudson Valley region, um, which is a few hours from where we live. Uh, for those that are not familiar with the Hudson Valley, it's like north of New York City. It's essentially the, the region between New York City um, in the south and then Albany kind of in the north, just that region, the east east uh, side of, of New York itself. Um, had a chance to check out a record store that I've been dying to go to for years called Hudson Valley Vinyl that's in Beacon, New York, which was about 50 miles north of New York City. Um, wasn't terribly far from where uh, Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed, lives in Poughkeepsie. Um, it was only like maybe 20 minutes from P Poughkeepsie, just south of that. But and, and it was just an incredible store. The wall was stacked with really a great variety of jazz, funk, um, rock, things like that. There was like a butcher cover that was on the wall. I wish I took a picture of it. Um, actually, if you go to the Hudson Valley uh, vinyl Instagram page, one of their most recent posts, I think it's like two posts back, um, you can actually see the back of my head. They took a photo um, the day that I was there, and you can kind of see a little bit in the distance the wall. Um, a real small place, but was packed with absolutely incredible um, records. Um, just really, it was mostly jazz, uh, like funk and soul. They had a small section of like hip hop and um, like electronic and stuff. And then they had a decent selection of rock as well, but jazz and then like funk and soul was definitely their biggest, uh, was what they were definitely known for. But just again, absolutely blown away. If you ever have a chance to go there, it's worth it. First one I found, um, cheaper one, but I've never seen this before. This is Bootsy's rubber band. And this is called, this boot is made for funkin'. Um, just, a uh, late 70s on Warner Brothers, uh, Bootsy Collins from Funkadelic, um, just a, a, uh, a solo album that he had. Um, included some people from the uh, from Funkadelic. Again, I'm not super familiar with the whole group, but had a very similar feel to it, very funky, um, and just for real cheap as well. Um, 
was definitely great. And this is a, a promo one as well. Got the hype sticker, uh, kind of a sticker on the front for $10. Great condition. Um, definitely a great one there. Next one. Um, was really excited to find this. Actually, really all the, re the remaining three that I got from Hudson Valley. I was absolutely uh, just super excited to find. The first one, this is Grant Green, The Final Countdown. This is the soundtrack to the movie, The Final Countdown, that came out, I think, in like 1972. Um, that featured Billy D. Williams, who was in um, Star Wars, the original uh, Star Wars series, uh, playing Lando Calrissian. Um, but this is a uh, Grant Green led session, but he only features on what sounds to be like maybe five, maybe six of the tracks. Um, uh, a, a funky kind of jazz funk type sound to it. Um, the A side was was amazing. Really, all the tracks were real uh, upbeat, real nice, great sounding kind of jazz funk. B side, the first two tracks were great, and then the last three, um, it's not as big of a fan of, but um, cool one to find. Uh, continuing to add to the Grant Green collection. I only need uh, two more from the 70s, Visions, and uh, his last album called Easy on Versatile. So, but adding to this great, great condition, um, good price for it. And this was just in the in the bins. So, um, as I mentioned before, I don't think I really said too much about it, but the bins were absolutely stacked with just heat. It was not there was nothing that was garbage. They didn't they didn't really buy um, a lot of just like filler, especially the jazz. And then I also looked at kind of the funk and soul section. Um, I'm a lot more knowledgeable on jazz, so when it came to the funk and soul, maybe there was some stuff that wasn't as great, but for the most part, it was a lot of really nice stuff. Um, but the jazz, I mean, they had, uh, it, there was a new arrivals bin that had probably maybe 80 to 100 records, maybe even more in it. Um, and then they had a, just a general jazz section that was split up by artists. Um, they had a uh, just a, a general G section as well. And that's where I found the Grant Green one, just like just sitting there. I mean, I've never seen that record before. And the fact that it was just sitting in the bins was definitely a testament to how great the um, the store was itself and just how much uh, just quality they had. This next one was I one of the best finds. I've never seen this record. I think this is one of the rarest impulse titles um, of any. I've never seen anybody show it. Um, and when they do show it, it's extremely expensive. Um, this is the artistry of Freddie Hubbard. Freddie Hubbard, I wish this was an original or even an early press. Um, I mean, it's earlier. It's it's early 70s. It's on, um, I'll show this one. It's on the black uh, Impulse label. So I'll kind of just show kind of just on that, that black Impulse kind of like neon lettering impulse label um doesn't have the rvg reading online i heard that these pressings as you're kind of getting past that the black and red label in the early 70s that the sound quality isn't as great but um i don't know i don't i don't believe that on this one this one sounded incredible really dynamic great stereo sound to it um more than likely this was pressed from the original tapes uh, maybe it was redone by the the, uh, the ABC uh, engineers at the time, but sounded incredible. Again, a great record. This has a rare appearance of John Gilmore on the saxophone. Um, was a long time player, uh, or sorry, a long term, a long time uh, member of Sun Ra's uh, orchestra. But um, again, a great one. Very happy to find this. I think this one was like $20 for this. It was described as having scuffs, but this plays like VG++. So great price. Again, never seen this one. Um, was not going to leave it there because I don't think I was probably ever going to find it again. The big find from there, um, this is the last one from Hudson Valley Vinyl, is Funkadelic, their first album. This is the second pressing um, from the mid-70s, uh, still on Westbound. Um, sounds great. Uh, this one was on the wall 
and uh, I got there. They opened at noon. I got there a few minutes early because I had to travel, as I said, almost two hours. Um, so I got there. wasn't exactly sure what to expect if there was going to be. It was a Saturday, so I wasn't sure if there was going to be a line or not. And uh, there ended up being one guy that was in front of me. But standing in front of the shop, I could see in the window uh, the wall that was right on the other side of the window. Um, and I saw this record. This is one that I've been looking for, especially recently as I've gotten more into to Funkadelic. Um, was not going to leave this and uh, picked it up as quick as I could. Um, one, unique thing, one unique thing about their shop is the fact that the stuff that's on the wall, the records are never in the jackets. Um, you just grab the jacket, you bring it to the register, and then they give you the record. And if you want to listen to it, you want to inspect it, whatever it is, um, that's kind of how they do it. Um, I liked that system. It's, I think a lot of their stuff is higher end items on the wall. Um, and so they don't probably want people messing around potential for, for something to get uh, damaged. So um, smart system. I haven't seen that before. I know that some places like, I, I think I've heard that like Amoeba does that in California. Um, but this was the first shop that I went to that actually did that. So um, something a little different, but Again, nothing wrong with that. Um, so real excited for this one. This one was very clean, uh, very happy to have it. And again, just overall was a great trip. Would love to go back again. I hope, um, I have some friends that live in New York City. So if I'm ever down there, take the opportunity to go there again. But again, you if you have the chance to go, uh, make a day trip there, it's definitely worth it, especially if you like jazz. Again, I can't really speak about the rock, but if it's anything like the jazz, it'll be very well curated, very good condition. Um, prices were very reasonable. Again, that Freddie Hubbard was 20. The Grant Green, I think, was like 40, which is pretty good, considering that can be anywhere between like 50 and 100, depending on the um, the condition. And, and even that, like the Bootsy Collins, I mean, that was a cheap one. So, um, but yeah, that was a great one. The other uh, trip I took, um, I had a bachelor party to go to. Um, it was in Portland, Maine. And on my way to uh, Portland, I ended up driving. I was supposed to fly, but the flight got canceled. So I drove. And as I was going through Albany, I wanted to check out this one record store that I didn't have a chance to, to go to when I was the, in the area Memorial Weekend. Um, I'm blanking on the name of the store. I'm just kidding. No, um, it was called Soundhouse Records, and it was actually in Troy, um, which is where like RPI, uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, which is one of the big engineering schools in New York State. Um, it was just north of Albany. It was only like 10 minutes from Albany. Um, I found two records there. Never, I wasn't familiar with either of them. This one I really was pulled in by the cover, kind of has this like comic book type looking cover. This is called um, Behold the Mighty Army and New Birth is the name of the group. This is from uh, 1977. Um, just a real nice like funky type session. Um, you got quite a, quite a large cast on the back. I'm not sure if it was just for the photo or um, I mean that would be quite a large group for for the uh, for the, the the recording, but you never know with these funky albums. There, it's always it's always up in the air with that. So, haven't had a chance to listen to this one, but this one was cheap. Uh, I think it's like ten dollars, maybe fifteen dollars at most. Warner Brothers as well. So happy to grab that. Um, and the other one I got in at Soundhouse was it was Shotgun. This is their first album um, from 1977 as well on ABC. Was not familiar with this one. Um, thought it had a kind of a cool cover. Guys look pretty cool on the front. Um, uh, took a listen to it again. Funky, uh, kind of like almost like a soul funk type sound to it, but very groovy as well. Um, great, great sound to it. So, uh, excited to grab this one. Another cheap one. I think it's like $12 for this. And then when I actually made it to Portland, I checked out uh, three record stores. Now, in preparation for going on the trip, um, I knew that I was going to have a chance one of the days to to go out and look at some records um, and some different stores. And I had asked a few people on Instagram if they had 
gone to any stores, if they knew about any stores, and really nobody had any information on it. And so I just kind of did my own research. I found that there was actually three shops that were all on the same street. Um, it was called Congress Street in Portland. Um, let me see if I can remember all of the... There was one place that was called Strange Main that was more... Uh, it was a smaller place. A lot of the stuff, not super great condition. Um, had an eclectic look to the place. Um, kind of a cool place to check out, but I didn't find anything there. And then one that I had heard of, and I don't really know where I'd heard it about it from, was called Electric Buddhas. Um, and that one was a combination of like a record store along with like video games and memorabilia and, and things like that. Um, they didn't have a huge selection of records, but the records they did have were all in, in, in nice condition, but fortunately struck out there. Um, but the last store that I went to was called um, Moody Lords, and it was a combination of like women's clothing it was like this like kind of vintage type women's clothing and then they also had records and the records again it was not a huge huge selection um but uh the stuff that they had i only ended up grabbing one it was something that was on the wall but uh from what i saw it was it was a reasonable uh selection they definitely had the best selection of jazz especially they had a good rock selection as well um, of the three stores. So the one that I found was Outward Bound Eric Dolphy. Um, this is a late 60s pressing on the purple prestige label. Um, you don't really hear that one being talked about too much. Uh, it does have the Van Gelder stamp and um, haven't had a chance to listen to this one yet. This one's actually next on the on the listening uh, kind of cue, but it's got Eric Dolphy. He's on alto sax, bass, clarinet, and flute. He plays the flute on one track, and then it's somewhat evenly split between the alto sax and the bass clarinet on the remaining tracks. You've got Freddie Hubbard is on the trumpet, Jackie Bayard is on the piano, George Tucker on bass, and Roy Haynes on the drums. So great lineup. The original was on New Jazz, and it had that greenish, almost looked uh, like it was like outer space type. Um, at least that's kind of the feel that I have, or at least it's more of like you're kind of in the outskirts in a uh, rural type area, um, but a green, kind of this dark greenish black tint to it. Um, this cover is really nice. I think this cover was uh, the one that they put when it changed to the blue prestige Trident label around 64, um, or maybe even when it went to prestige, they changed the cover, but I like this one as well. This is a real nice use of colors and, uh, Great price for it. Looked really nice. Um, never seen this record before. I know I think that this is one of the ones that has been recently uh, put out as part of the Acoustic Sounds, the Analog Productions series, um, or at least there was re the, the represses of them, And um, but never seen that. And I didn't really kind of jump on that, um, but jumped on this one. I had the chance, so was really excited um, to find that. Again, it was a cool uh, place to check out. Um, there was another store that I missed out on that I saw after I had left. Um, no idea what the name is. I can't remember it now. But um, but yeah, yeah. So those were the two road trips that I've taken in the last few weeks. Again, venturing out past just like Rochester uh, as record stores, and was very very. Uh, very happy to, to to not only experience these different stores, experience these different cities and, and areas, but also to check out the great stores that there were, especially Hudson Valley Vinyl. Can't say enough about it. Really phenomenal store um, worth checking out. So um, that's it for this video. Please think about liking and subscribing if you have not already. Um, last thing, I... Uh, just want to give a quick shout out to Trent from Trent's Records. I uh, started his channel maybe about, might have been close to six months ago. Um, I've been watching his channel for the last few months. Love his taste in jazz, but also just his videos in general. Even records that I'm not as familiar with or genres that I don't uh, gravitate towards or I don't really collect at this time as much. Um, just very well spoken, real nice guy. Gave me a, he gave me a shout out in his last video 
Um, it was very uh, just uh, honored to, to be kind of shouted out by you. Appreciate that. Um, absolutely, again, absolutely love your channel. Check it out if you have not. Trent's Records. He's also on Instagram as well. Same uh, name as well. Again, thank you so much, Trent. Um, appreciate the support. And um, again, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for the support. And I will see you in the next vinyl video. Bye.